Well, I've this uh, tri-vector sitting in my workshop for quite a couple of years now. And I finally got some uh, new glass made for, well, perspex. I've got some perspex pieces cut for it. But the window got smashed. Um, this was given to me, I can't remember by who, but somebody gave it to me anyway. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a test run on this meter, the tri-vector, and um, explain how it works. This meter may go to Switzerland at some stage to one of my friends who collects meters and he wanted a meter with pointer dials and I got about probably 10 of these so you can have one but the postage is the biggest issue try to get it shipped but the thing is about 25 kg and the postage becomes extremely expensive. I'm going to decapsulate the device have a look in it and uh, show you and get the thing running and then Fix the glass, of course. All the screws are out, so it should come off now. Take the hood off and reveal the inside. Which is quite nice, of course, because it's a lens and gear meter. And here we've got Luke, he always shows a lot of interesting in my metering things. When I fiddle with meters, the cat is always there. Hey Lucas, you're a good cat. And we're gonna try to do the glass and connect this device up. Look at the cat. I had to go a bit more in depth in uh, this meter because it wasn't driving the kilowatt hour meter register and I found this particular shaft is a band, this is a drive shaft which drives the register here and I'll take this gear off that comes from the gearbox there so I have to take this part apart at the moment luckily this shaft is not bent well, somebody must have had a play with this at one stage. Must have fiddled with this thing, but um, yeah, I'm trying to fix it. And uh, luckily, I got spare parts for these meters, so I can fix this. Well, I got all the gears back in. I replaced the shaft and uh, got these uh, side gears here back in. Uh, where can we see them? I hear the drive gears there. To the magic gearbox and I'll give this thing a test one tomorrow see how she goes and the sun is uh, about to drop down well I got the repair done and the meter is running um, the main spindle is still a bit bent because this thing has been dumped and it had some impact but it's, at the moment it's going fine I've got the three elements right in series, one kilowatt load on it, so it's about four and a half amps. On pair, so I've just uh, incoming supply, loop, 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 uh, potentials on, load on the red wire, light blue wires return to the source, and the black wires going to the. I've got a little heater up here, and that is uh, just a temporary load for this device. Uh, the KVAH is going, and um, it's advancing slowly and there's a little bit of reactive power on here because uh, this little blower fan in the heat of it causes a bit of reactive. I'll uh, try to put a fully inductive load on the meter and explain exactly how it works. Um, on this particular meter I'll take the cover off and we get a bit better uh, or less glare. Okay the demand indicator is uh, rising at the moment and you'll see there's a little pusher if I'll move this needle up a bit, there's a little pusher here a little red pointer which resets every 30 minutes so when there is a load on it uh, increases increases till the 30 minute event happens and it drops the little pointer back the big demand pointer will remain where it is and then uh, when the meter reader comes uh, they can reset the pointer and take a note of the dial what it shows, say for example this shows 100, 10, maybe 10, 2 or so Hundred and the MDI is times uh, times 0 0.4. So if that meter shows a hundred, 
that would uh, equate to 40 kilowatts, 102, 40, 40 point something kilowatts. So the KVA our H meter part is running slowly because there's a little uh, fan motor in the heater. So if the load becomes more inductive in a factory and the power factor will drop, the reactive part of the meter will run faster and the active one will slow down. I'll try to uh, put a load on with a couple of empty microwave transformers and see what happens, see uh, what type of loading we're going to get. And here you can see the disk speed, reasonable speed, and then we've got the worm drive here. You can see if you look carefully, you can see a bit of wobble in the disk shaft and a bit of squeak sound as well. Meter has been dumped, I think, because the top disk is wobbling as well. But at least it's not polling on the magnets, so uh, I'm still quite happy with that part. So it's a three element meter. Here we have the so-called 30 minute timer and there's a little contact here. It's closed and uh, hopefully, if I don't forget, I'll make a uh, note of it when it resets and then it'll open. Then the little MDI pointers will fall back to zero on these two dials. And the whole process starts over again. The reactive part of the meter is quite happy. It's cruising slowly. Two pieces of artist meters. They're made by Landis and Gear. It's an original Swiss design. It's amazing how they can put this together. These meters were probably built in the 50s, I would say. Somebody can enlighten me, somebody from Lenders and Gear maybe. There's two pieces of art. art. And I've got a magic gearbox behind the KVA H register which uh, calculates KVA out of the active and reactive meter. Here you see the two large gears, that is the drive from the kilowatt hour meter to the Magic gearbox, and here is the one from the KVARH. It's two large gears. You can see the clock timer motor spinning away. The lens and gear motor. Well, the load is must be 1.5 kilowatts because at 5 ampere you should get 3.45, and we're sitting nearly at 5 full scale. That's alright, we get a good uh, read drop down on the device. Um, the timer is nearly there. It's almost ready to uncouple and I'll keep the camera on the dials here so you can see what happens. Contacts are very closed. Watch the center spindles. engaged. There we go, that's why I stay quiet so you can enjoy the click. The amount of time I have spent as a kid and still as an adult standing in front of meters, looking at meters, wait till the numbers flick over the tariff engages or disengages. It is fascinating. There we go, that's uh, Donald's event there. So both these meters have maxed out so they are under overload but um, so I it was not protesting in the current calls. Um, potential call, current call, potential of voltage call, current call is the thick windings underneath and at the bottom is the same. Uh, potential call we can see and we can hopefully see the current call underneath here so that are the measuring elements causing a phase shift in the meter which makes the meter uh, spin. There's also a pulse uh, device being put in here at some stage by someone. I haven't connected that up yet. It's just cut off here. Now I'm going to connect a pure inductive load to microwave transformators and look at the difference on the meter. The reactive uh, component is running quite fast. 
and the active part of the meter is running very slow now. So an inductive load gives a very poor power factor. So we've got the CAVA component running fast now. We've got these two transformators sitting here. Um, I will see without electrocuting myself. Tap the heater on, see what happens. I'm gonna get a slowdown or a increase or something. Well, at least have the camera sitting here happily. Oh, I'll turn the whole sabang on, see what happens. We still got a good reactive component on here. The heater is running. And the transformators are running, so it's still a good reactive component by these two microwave oven transformators. Um, I'm going to experiment a little bit. I may do a power factor correction in, uh, as I'm blowing myself up, see if it works. And you can prove the fact uh, why we put power factor correction in factories and the likes. It's good to see the KVA dial running at a higher speed, that's actually very satisfying. Might do even an arc on the microwave and see uh, what difference that's going to make in the speed. Uh, actually, the heater has an on-off switch. I'll get an overall distance shot of this without just zapping myself. We're still running. You may see the reactive meter slow down a little bit. And I turn uh, the heater on. I'm pretty sure it does. I love electromechanical stuff because you can see how it works and what it does. Okay, I'm gonna turn my inductive load on. And what I've done now, I've, I've chickened out, I've put some capacitors here. I first do one capacitor, 30 microfarad, and I want to see what it does in the power factor correction uh, side of it. I'm going to plug this in and I'll see what happens, see if it's going to go bang or anything improves. I'm not sure if the meter slowed down or not. Yeah, it did slow down. It did slow down. That is interesting. So, power factor correction. So, I'm going to put another one on there. Watch that meter. And it goes faster. So, power factor correction is very important. It saves a lot of money uh, by getting it closer to 0 0.95, 0 0.98. Now we'll put a few extra marks on this disc here. This disc has no marks on it, it's in line with the other one. And we got that exactly at the back. I think that's around there, how far is that? Somewhere there, somewhere there. So we're going to plug it in. And Visualize the power factor improvement. Still going to try with 30 microfarad first, and then um, we'll do it with 60 microfarad after that. It's definitely slowing down. Um, I'm just carefully going to put 60 micro on standby. Unplug safety first. Well, the capacitors could have a charge, they have a discharge resistor, so I'm going to carefully double this one up without blowing myself up, hopefully. It's still on camera, I don't know. That's one. 
These leads are not full mains weighted, but for the experiment it's fine to have a bit of resistance in the leads. Make it a little split here. It's on camera here. That's not so. Got 60 microfarad sitting here now. Keep these two leads apart. Pretty dodgy, but uh, it will work. Okay, we're going to turn the inductive load back on again. And we're going to plug the capacitors in. 60 microfarad. Meter's going backwards. So that is too much. So we're exceeding, and the meter has a reverse running stop. So 60 microfarad was a bit too much. Now, say the factory decided to turn the heaters on. I'm going to do resistive load. See if it makes any difference. Now, the active meter is turning. So we have uh, exceeded the power factor in this particular situation. What I'll do, I'll get 60 micro, I'll make it 45. Unplug the capacitors. There we go, meter is turning again. So um, let's have a look. I'll put uh, make it 45 micro. So we're gonna hang on, what we're gonna do here. Then goes on there. And I need another lead. I'm back again. It's very important when you do this stuff, you need to unplug things. So I've got uh, one straight on the mains, the other two in series, so that this 230s makes 15, and 30 is 45 micro puff. Oh, the label, I'll show the label too. These are capacitors, they come out of uh, uh, metal halides, uh, street lights, from a stadium. Got about a hundred of those. Okay, energized device. No power factor correction, inductive load, power factor correction. And the meter has slowed down quite a bit. So we got 45 microfarad. And it gives an improved power factor. Yeah, just waffling on about these things a bit, but yeah. I can expand more on it in another video, but for now I'll leave it like this. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll show a quick shot of the gearbox on this device. So we're working now on the corrected power factor. This is my uncorrected power factor plug. Pretty dodgy, but for the experiment it does the job, so. I will plug this in and let it just percolate for a while. A lot of gears in this thing. Um, it's amazing how they make these uh, meters. Just considering you design a meter like that and then put all these gears in there. Mathematical, quite amazing. I hope the camera will pick it up. Is it going out of focus? Just taking the dial of the middle part. We're running just on reactive power at the moment. Probably can hear the microwave transformators spinning. Okay, a bit of uh, metering and power factor correction. It's quite good to visualize it as an electromechanical device. Let you see what it does. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe. If you like it and of course uh, discuss discuss if you're not sure